Hi, Mike Jacoby here, inviting you to join us for a new show premiering in July right here on KCAT Television. It's called Jacoby's Talk of the Town, a conversation program where we'll be talking to folks from local government, from high tech, and even some jazz artists and all the stops in between. And we won't steer away from controversy. So join us for a couple of laughs and a few deep thoughts, only on KCAT and the talk of the town. Hello, and welcome to the talk of the town. I'm Mike Jacoby. This is our inaugural show. And let me tell you a little bit about the show. It's a bit of my homage to Charlie Rose, although he's much brighter. But our guests will be equally as interesting. Our, uh, our idea is not to shy away from controversy, but uh, we're not necessarily going to search it out either. In this first show, I think we'll talk mostly about what's good about this town. Uh, as a bit of full disclosure, uh, my guests are very dear friends of mine and people that I work with in, uh, when I, uh, as executive producer of Jazz on the Plaza. Further disclosure, last night, uh, as we're taping today, was our first jazz on the plaza, so I'm feeling a little raggedy handy today, so we'll see, we'll see what we can do with that. Again, welcome, and may I welcome uh, to our first series, Ms. Carrie Hope and uh, Jonathan Mills. How are you, buddy? Michael, good to see you. Good to have you guys here. So we're going to talk about you guys, are, uh, and, and you were basically Los Gatos Music and Arts. That's right. You're the, you're the board, right? Yeah, you know, it was 13 years ago that Terry Hope had the idea for doing jazz on the plaza, mm -hmm. and uh, before that, she had been involved as an arts and culture commissioner here in the town of Los Gatos, working on music in the park when that was happening under those auspices, and uh, and she wanted to do more, and she's always had a passion for promoting the arts in our community, and especially through music, but in other ways as well. She's the owner. It has been since it opened over 30 years ago, the Los Gatos Coffee Roasting Company, where she does arts programs. And the first 15 year old to run a business. Yeah, you know, when most <laughs> little girls you. were out <laughs> doing <laughs> lemonade Dating. stands, yeah. she, she had a cardboard box and had it's a coffee incredible. shop going. But, you know, she had this idea to do, uh, to do this. And, uh, and so uh, we now, for a number of years, have worked together. Terry is the president of Los Gatos Music and Arts and myself as the chairman of that organization, which is a, a community benefit, a 501c3 nonprofit organization. And so when you say you guys are Los Gatos Music and Arts, um, Terry is certainly the inspiration and the vision behind it, but Los Gatos Music and Arts is certainly a, a community effort. We have close to 40 volunteers who, throughout the year, come together to make it the special thing it is. Terry, talk about, uh, and I remember that music in the park used to be literally where jazz in the plaza That's is. That's right, yes. Uh, and then... That's right. By the, the, the police station I, and the it library. It had outgrown the town plaza, uh, spilling onto the streets, and I had an idea, which I took to our council and asked them if we could relocate the music in the park from the plaza to the civic center. I wanted more space, and I also wanted that event, which was the town's event, to be in front of City Hall, and we invited the council members to come mingle, to be introduced to the um, community, and to have more of an open door a relationship between the council and the community. So that was the rationale behind that, but it left a void in the plaza for uh, the downtown, and I had an inspiration. One day I said, wouldn't it be great to have a jazz series on a Wednesday night, kind of the quiet uh, middle time of hump day, you know, in in downtown, um, when the you know businesses were quiet and and there wasn't much going on. So I started thinking about the idea and talking to a number of different people. And as a matter of fact, each of the people I talked to said, "You need to talk to Michael Jacoby because he knows everything about yeah. jazz." And I knew you from. The jazz station down in yeah, Carmel. Carmel yeah, right. Well, you 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 alluded to retail, and uh, and there was a bit. I mean, you have a retail store downtown, yeah. and there was a bit of a self-serving aspect in terms of bringing business back downtown. All very well intentioned, and that that, that losing that uh, that series really did have an effect on uh, on downtown foot traffic. Mm -hmm. So the idea of putting it in the middle of the week, which I thought was brilliant. Terrific shot in the arm, and I, at the time I was the long defunct uh, uh, president 
of the Downtown Association. So the whole idea of there being a buzz downtown again, right. uh, what, what, what I call downtown again, was, uh, was a big deal. Yeah. What I love about downtown Los Gatos is just all so charming and wonderful. And, it's, and, the, and the plaza is a central gathering place. It's really the heart of the downtown. And, and so I have a passion for our community and keeping it vibrant, but I also have a passion for the arts, sure. music and fine arts. And that's really important to me that it's part of our culture and part of what we do. Los Gatos has this long history of uh, being an arts community. Uh, I remember as a young person in the 60s and 70s, um, we had all, all throughout the downtown, in particular, Old Town was a wonderful place for artists to gather, and there were potters and uh, um, painters and musicians, yeah. uh, and it was, it was something that was really fostered in our community, and we had a great deal of community pride developed around that, and it really inspired me to carry that forward. Well, and, and uh, speaking of downtown and how special it is, and also uh, referring to the fact that we're not going to shy away from controversy, we will in the future programs address the North 40 issue and the possible impact on, uh, on the downtown area. We won't address that today, because we're feel-good and we're happy people. Today. We're happy people. Although you, you guys obviously remember this, and, and that's something. this is something that finally the tail started wagging the dog, but the Art and Wine Festival, right. the, my God, it was the only time you could meet a Hells Angel at the end, but it got, <laughs> it got pretty crazy toward the end. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we have a lot of uh, uh, arts things that happen here in uh, our fine town. Plein Air is right. done by the Los Gatos Morning Rotary, and Los Gatos Music and Arts is one of the sponsors of Plein Air. Uh, we Explain what that is. Of what plein air means and, and, and what the event is for folks that have never been there. Yeah, I mean, it's it's wonderful. Go ahead. Well, yeah. it's, it's a tradition that... Uh, Does it mean occurred. outdoor painting? Absolutely. Exactly. In, yeah. okay. in French, plein air is, plein is air. painting okay. in the outdoors. And it was a movement by artists at the turn of the century. And, you know, Monet, Matisse, so on, uh, were painting outdoors, which was kind of a new revolution and uh, style of painting. And so it's been carried forward in... And you know, in a long tradition, and there are plein air art festivals uh, in many communities. And uh, a group of us went and studied the one that takes place down in um, Carmel, and we were so inspired by that, we wanted to create that in our own community. So, with the help of the Los Gatos Morning Rotary Club, it really became um, something that we were able to develop in our own community. So, so once a year, a group of artists come to Los Gatos. They are. Uh, put up in the homes of people who volunteer to have them stay with them for a couple of See, days. I didn't know this. Yeah, yeah. and they set up their easels all around town, and it's really neat. You can walk around town and, and see them painting what they've chosen to paint out in the fresh air. And uh, at the end of those two days, they take those paintings and they put them on display in the town plaza. And people can spend a Saturday coming down and taking a look at this and it's really neat what you end up do seeing they sell them they do they do okay. and what you end up seeing is people uh, very often buying paintings of their house because the plein air artists have said oh well that's a house I'd love to paint or people buying paintings of some of their favorite scenes around town and they're original one of a kind yeah. only can be acquired in that well, environment and, and certainly uh, getting your inspiration from Carmel this uh, the word inspiration is perhaps a three-way street here because not only for the towns and for the artists, it's, it's, it's got to be a backdrop that lends itself to, to painting. Yeah, it's, it does, of course. It's got to sound diesel, but I just don't see it happening. No, you know, this uh, area, long before this was Silicon Valley, this was the Valley of Hearts Delight uh, because of all the agriculture that happened here. And uh, Los Gatos, for decades, has been referred to the g as the gem of the Valley of Hearts Delight. And I think we, we maintain that uh, today. Um, Terry said our downtown is charming. It is charming and beautiful. Our architecture, our buildings, our trees, our hills. Um, this is a place that people want to paint. So, Terry, have we ever been on a program with him when he hasn't told that story about the gem of Silicon Valley? I'm bringing it back. He's, I'm telling you, he owns the back. rights He's, to that no, story. No. I, I think it is the gem I of love the Valley it. of Hearts I love it. It's an, an incredible phrase. And it was well, it coined, says so much more than high tech is what's nice about it. Was it was coined years ago, but, mm -hmm. but re-stamping it is really important right now yeah. because it really speaks volumes about our community. 
So, the the uh, Lost Cats music and arts. So on a on a day to day basis, you um, you underwrite these things. You underwrite the, the support of them, or do you guys go out and approach yeah. civic groups and say, "Hey, Rotary, hey Lions." So one of, with one of the neat things about this that I think is great is, um, as Terry mentioned, she was involved with the Arts and Culture Commission with music in the park. Um, the way that that worked was the arts commissioners would go out and uh, ask local businesses if they would like to donate to making that happen. So there was never any tax dollars that came uh, from folks and uh, were applied to Music in the Park. And so uh, it purely came from businesses. And the arts commissioners, they did everything. They ran the show. And Terry was one of the original people 28 years ago when she was, you know, eight. Um, did that. And so what, what's really neat is there's almost this unbroken chain of involvement since then. So I have not been in Los Gatos 28 years, but when I did move to Los Gatos, one of the first things I did was become a member of the Arts and Culture Commission. And myself and Valerie Hopkins and Marianne Hamilton were the chairs of Music in the Park doing that. It got weird for the town uh, because what was happening was commissioners are appointed by town council. And these people appointed by town council were asking for money from local businesses. And that could be a little weird because you could get the situation where a business says, oh, you know, I, uh, I have that inspection coming next week. How much do I write this check to for to the town? And the appearance of impropriety was there. So the town uh, actually came to Los Gatos Music and Arts and said, look, um, and, and uh, at that same time I was on the Arts and Culture Commission, Terry had asked me to do Los Gatos Music and Arts with her. And so uh, the town came to us and said, look, will you guys also do music in the park? Right. And so we transitioned it out from the Arts and Culture Commissioner to take away that appearance of, you know, that possible appearance of impropriety. And since they weren't giving you any money. They weren't anyway. Yeah. So. No, as a matter of fact, so what happened was there was, when we took it over, there was money left over that had been raised by arts commissioners that the town was holding in a special account because people who had given to music in the park that's what they had given to, not to the town general okay. fund. Right. So they couldn't spend that on anything else but music in the park. So for the last six years, the town has been uh, taking a little bit of that money reserve. that we had raised yeah. as arts commissioners years ago, reserve, and giving it to Los Gatos Museum of Arts, um, a stipend really, to just help sure. offset it. So at the end of the day, our uh, entire team of people goes out to local businesses and uh, to corporate sponsors uh, and asks if they would like to underwrite this, get involved with it. And, you know, we don't just do it so we can do these two great concerts, 20 of them every summer. We do it going back to that original passion that Terry had for promoting the arts in our community. And so we take uh, the money that we raise, we produce these concerts because we have hard costs. Got to pay the sound guy, got to pay the stage manager, got to pay the bands. Uh, and then we take what we have left over and we channel that into arts education programs and arts scholarship programs, some amazing jazz programs that we do here in the local community. You might want to mention? Well, we yeah, let's mention those yeah. because people sure. ask, ask me on the show, you know, where does the money go? Fundamentally, we we pay the artists. And one of my criteria for jazz and plaz events is that these are original artists performing their original music. Obviously, some of it's coming from the American Soundbook, but but these are people who are composers and original artists who are you know, on the road performing live to the public. And that's what we want to promote. We want to be able to fund that. We also do want to bring as much music and arts back into the schools as we possibly can. So we underwrite the cost of some um, music teachers to go into our local schools to do some clinics and workshops. And then we do a summer jazz camp for kids with about 50 young people and we do scholarships for that and we pay for the instructors and the facility for making that happen. So uh, most of the events, you talk about the uh, the 20 concerts, the plein air, are more or less summer oriented. Uh, what the arts happens, education what happens uh, uh, the, uh, we have the a December, November, we have December. A, truly have a virtual office. Yeah, okay. <laughs> it's been in my garage and in my in my basement, car. in my car, <laughs> yeah. your business, <laughs> in my business, um, but you know we don't have a facility, 
So we use the park and sometimes we're renting a, a school room or, or something like that to do some of our workshops, some of the churches. Renting but so space. for instance, your uh, jazz clinics obviously are school years, so they're yes. a little bit later yeah. in the yes. fall. Yeah. And of course the, uh, the uh, act of raising the funds that we need to produce the con concerts, that's a year-round yeah. effort as well. And you know, the, the nifty thing is that a significant portion of all the sponsors are local business. They're, our, they're actually our friends. Yes. You know, we all live here in the community and we're very involved in the community. We're involved in other things as well. Terry and I also serve together on the board of the Los Gatos Monte Serena Police Foundation, another nonprofit community benefit organization. And we do so with other business owners and community members. And so our friends, people who have been here for decades, like uh, you know Frank and Marilyn Dorsett, mm -hmm. who uh, own the uh, the local car wash here, the Lark Avenue Car Wash, uh, they step up and say, yeah, we're going to be sponsors at your concerts, and we want to be on your jazz card so we can sure. help keep this thing going. Let me ask you, and, and I will open, um, if you have a bucket list for jazz, or for not for performers, but for something you'd like to do, for instance, I would love to see us make use, mm -hmm. with their permission, of the new theater, and, you know, I would love to bring Eastwood in and narrate a panel discussion and show Bird or something. And I think that's something that would, would really be compelling to the audience and add. We've never really used a lot of cinema, but haven't used any for, from a jazz standpoint. So that would be one on my bucket list. I, and by the way, I think that would be a fabulous uh, thing for us to do. And uh, I believe that the owners of the uh, cinema would probably we'll, be we'll up for that we'll because you know those uh, those folks are people who've lived in the community for a long time as well and uh, I know personally that they care about our community and want to do what it takes to make it a, a better place so I think there's that uh, I think there's more opportunity for um, some of the bigger businesses in Los Gatos to get behind uh, putting a little more into uh, the arts and I think there's a significant opportunity for the town of Los Gatos to actually put into this as well and put uh, put a foot in the game. They really don't, other than they let us use the space. Mm -hmm. They do charge us a fee mm -hmm. for all the things we do. We have to actually pay, we don't get. And uh, I would like to see a, a stronger financial um, uh, connection between what we do and, uh, and what we do for the community. My bucket list, um, I have a lot of things on the bucket, but <laughs> A couple of my pet projects I'd like to see happen. Um, a, a permanent stage at the Civic Center for music in the park, as well as other arts uh, projects. Yeah. I think, and we've already we've got, started it. We do have uh, we've started we do it. have a kitty already yeah. uh, established uh, to fund that project. So there's some. That's kind of in memory of our friend Peter Carter. Uh, it is. Exactly. It is. It yeah, is. the Peter Carter, uh, you know, memorial stage really is what we're talking about here and it's certainly doable and there are people who would be willing to step up and help make it happen. Um, you know, uh, there is the notion of politics and it is the Civic Center and there are many groups who uh, have an idea of what they want to see so we just have to navigate through that stuff yeah. but it's a and great idea. You have an idea about a sound I studio, do, that was the next wonderful. thing I was yeah. going to bring up because I, I have for many years thought it would be wonderful to have a professional recording studio in downtown Los Gatos where youth could meet with some of our artists in particular who want to come in the community as they're here for a jazz concert, for instance, and would like to do some mentoring, do some recording with some young people, do some clinics, and to have a recording studio for the talented young people we have here where they can, you know, come in and at you know, be underwritten the opportunity to do some recordings. And so just imagine being able to connect them up with the world-class jazz artists that Absolutely. we are able to bring in. I mean, look, let's face it, jazz on the plaz is becoming recognized across the country and to some extent outside the country as being a place where world-class yeah, talent absolutely. comes to perform. And how, what a wonderful thing for the youth of our community to be able to take advantage of that. We've had some incredible artists like Mose Allison and Marsha Ball, and you know we could go down a Ramsey long, and the list long goes. list, Ramsey Lewis. And, and they often offer that opportunity if we had a place to do it. Right. So, yeah, a professional recording studio, and I'm planting well, seeds as we speak. It is the logical next step with what uh, we do here at KCAT.
there is that video outlet of uh, mm -hmm. young people learning the, the business, and it would be the uh, to go to an audio uh, possibility would, would be terrific. Um, let's just take a quick second, and we're doing it a little bit in reverse, but your background, you were... Uh, you started, it was 30 years ago you started? 33 years ago, I founded Los Gatos Coffee Roasting Company. And you had a place where you and I met, because I was at KRML in Carmel, yes, and you did. had one in Carmel, That's cleverly called the Carmel Roasting Company. Yeah. <laughs> it was Cafe and Company of yes, Carmel Carmel's. at the time, yeah. yeah. At one time, I had five stores, yeah. but I, I whittled it down to just the one original store in Los Gatos. Um, I'm loving just having one operation, one place where I can meet and greet all my wonderful customers and enjoy having a real personal relationship with all my staff people so everyone in this town knows yeah. terry right. it, it is the social hub of los Gatos. her her very name strikes fear in the hearts of starbucks <laughs> i tell you you know that uh Sort of mermaid. That's right. Picture. The mermaid <laughs> modeled after Terry. But not coming up yeah. in the water; it's going down in the water <laughs> because of Los Gatos Room. Well, I'm really proud of surviving as a small, <laughs> you know, yeah, this independent is yeah, company right. of you know, my nature. The I, small businesses are yeah. the backbone of the American economy. The old, how how many employees do you have? Twenty-five. She employs twenty-five yeah. people. Twenty-five people get a paycheck. Absolutely. Because of what this person does. It's I guess on the t uh, on the twenty sixth, sometimes that will get her paycheck. But that's well, the nature yeah. of small business. That is, we weathered a but, lot of storms, yeah. you know, uh, over the years. Uh, just like uh, Los Gatos Music and Arts, you know, there's uh, really strong years economically, and mm -hmm. those were some tough ones. But we've yeah. always um, been very financially stable, nonetheless. You know, mm -hmm. because of the support we get in this community, Absolutely. it's extraordinary. Jonathan, you're with Autodesk. And yeah. your job, I had a buddy of mine named Paul Spangler, whose job was, he was the vice president of golf at Pebble Beach. Oh, wow. And I said, this is as good a job yeah. as there is in the world. But maybe second only to yours. Because <laughs> your job is pretty much go go to South Africa. Well, what would be fun? And just go out and uh, well, do things. So um, I am certainly privileged to work for uh, a meaningful company. And right. Autodesk definitely falls into that category. Uh, I'd say that it's often at the intersection of meaningful and fun. Uh, Autodesk is to physical things in our world what Photoshop is to the okay. image printed on a piece of paper. So if it is a physical thing, whether it's glasses, roads, buildings, cars, bridges, uh, iPads, watches, if it's a thing, factories, um, it is very likely designed in our software or the components of it designed in our software we make a media and entertainment software. So we wrote the software for Jim Cameron uh, that enabled him to make Avatar. Um, the latest Jurassic World movie, all the movies. Uh, every year, the winner of the Best Visual Effects Oscar is a person who used our software. Really? Every year for, I think it's something like 17 years now. Uh, and almost every video game is designed using our software as well. And so my role is to, uh, I have a, a small team that uh, I work with, and our job is to explore what's next for Autodesk uh, with a five to 100 year outlook. And so this might surprise some people to learn that we have a bio nano programmable matter group at Autodesk. So to us, cells are physical things that we can program with DNA. And so we have created uh, our own virus at Autodesk, and we are trying to create a virus that eats just cancer cells. A good virus. A good virus. Well, you have good viruses in you, right? You have gut stuff in you that you need and to live, and uh, or uh, bacteria and viruses throughout us that we interact with on a daily basis, and, and so we want a virus that will uh, eat uh, cancer, and we're actively working on that. We've worked with George Church at Harvard on the creation of DNA nanorobots for the targeted delivery of drug treatment. We oh. work with Skylar Tibbetts at MIT on programmable matter, the notion that ultimately, you you know, this is the extreme example of this maybe, but uh, you go to Ikea and you buy that flat pack, yep. you bring it home, you apply whatever the stimulus is, and it becomes the bookshelf. 
you reprogram that matter, and it becomes the other thing that you there want. There was no instead. doubt in my mind at one point in the show I was going to have to say, okay, Jonathan, we're going to have to continue that. <laughs> okay. But then and we quickly, that he's working with us. Right. It's oh. just such a blessing. <laughs> and coming from two small business people, the idea of having a 500-year plan when we're trying to get through September is amazing. <laughs> Thank you both. We're up against the clock. Uh, that's the talk of the town for this evening. On our next show, we're going to be talking to Pat Wolfram, who is the... Uh, Vice President of Los Gatos, or El Camino Hospital Los Gatos. It'll be fascinating. We'll talk a little bit about the recent decision by the Supreme Court about Obamacare in the weeks. If I've just got a couple of seconds and months to come, we're going to do a program on After the Cheers, talking to retired athletes. We will have the folks from the Monterey Jazz Festival here. So we'll just keep talking. You keep watching. Take care.